Just one through eight now? Or the whole thing again? Okay. The pastor asked me to read this passage to you. It's Malachi chapter 3, if you have your Bibles. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Uh, it'll start with uh, verse 1. It says here, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts, but who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he approaches? For he is like the refiner's fire and like the fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against the false swears, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? I think he already got the picture today of what's up on my mind, what the Lord gives me. Mainly in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Wherefore you not are not consumed, O son of Jacob. In other words, we look at less in the end of the scripture in the Old Testament how people were taken care of that sinned and done wrong. Some crucified. Some stoned to death. Some thrown into tried to throw into the lion's den. We find out today that he said he'd send a messenger. And I felt like that he was talking about me here at that moment. I come to bring you a message today. I'm the messenger of it. And you need to heed to what he has to say, not what I have to say. That's re reading. That's reading. I had him to read that because I got some other scriptures that I uh, have to read here and I wanted you to hear. We live in a changing world today. Everything changes. The season changes, of course you know that. The weather changes just over five minutes, it say, it say if you're living, of course, as we live here in Michigan, all you gotta just wait an hour or so and the weather changes. How true it is. We find out today that they're trying to change boundaries of different places, you know. They're trying to change nations changes. If you look at the scripture, you find out that Iraq and Iran used to be Persia. They changed the name of it. And of course, 
They're getting ready to, if you haven't heard, they're getting ready to change the face of a $20 bill. All kinds of changes are going on today in this world. But Jesus said in his word, I am the Lord, I do not change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll always be there. All, even all people today are doing some kind of a changing. But the main one that I want to say here right at this moment, it says if you know to do good and do it not, that's sin to you. We need to wake up in our ways of what we do. We change physically. We change emotionally in our attitudes and stuff. We change with the season of life, doing different things. We change jobs every once in a while. The changing of our ideas, our goals, and our convictions. And I think today this is so much going on in this world about that one, of changing your convictions. People are getting so relaxed in what God has to say for them and say to them that they're changing they're around, trying to worm, squirm around and trying to twist it around so it'll satisfy their life, not the life that Jesus wants us to have. Since God is unchangeable, some of the things uh, that never changes today, I want to talk a little bit about the wages of sin. Never changes. It's death, hell. It never changed. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, you all should know this in pretty well my heart, right? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Always the same. Always the same. Never will change. This verse describes two uh, absolutes here. The spirit of death <clears throat> is a paycheck for every man's slavery to sin. We find it out. The Bible says it. A spiritual death. We go back to Adam and Eve when they sinned in the garden. And from then it, it brought sin to every man that was born on the throne of this earth. And we have to get rid of that sin nature and, and attitude. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9, it says, By grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, but it is a gift of God. God brings it to us and gives it the opportunity to be saved, to, be, to miss hell, really, if you want to put it that way. Not for, by our works. We can't do, we can't go to church every Sunday. We can't go to uh, visit everybody that's sick in the hospitals. We can't sit down and read our Bibles, just read our Bibles at night by itself. Of course, it won't hurt, it won't do any harm, but that's not going to save you. You can't, actually, the Ten Commandments will not totally take you to heaven if you obey all of them. But we want to say today that uh, God wants us. In spite of inflation today and people in the wages of sin remains the same. Sin abounds every place. And we were just talking about that just a while ago. You know, I mean, you turn every, turn the television on, you turn the radio on, you just even look out the streets sometimes and you see the sin going on. The warning is there. Uh, and it came from clear back as far as the Garden of Eden, as I mentioned a while ago. Satan has is, uh, is lied to, to uh, Eve there in the garden. And of course, Eve in chapter three and ver uh, Genesis chapter three and verse four, and it says the serpent said to the woman, "You shall not surely die." No, God, God wasn't saying possibly uh, a physical death, but they died a spiritual death, separation from God, and that's what's going on today. As so many people, as I read there a while ago, that uh, so many of our ministers are leaving leaving the pulpits of all kinds of different kinds of sin and, and, and things that's going on in the world. They give us this uh, some statistics, and I'm not going to bring them to you, but they give me some statistics about 
and the reasons that a lot of the preachers are leaving the pulpit, and a lot of them are sexual activities in the in the churches. And that's how sad it is when that will enter, intervene into our churches and find that. Satan is called a liar and a murderer from the beginning in John chapter 5 and verses 44. And I think I think I need to read that to you. Let you see what he has to say there. You are the father of the devil. Listen to that. You are the father of the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He is made a, he was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own heart or his own resources. <coughs> from, for he is a liar and the father of it. And how much tragedy it is today. And the same thing we can find out that what happens to people. We find out when the two thieves on the cross. They were killed. The first thing was Are you worthy today? Death has continued to, to all. From Adam and Eve, it's continued to all. From them. In Romans chapter 5 and verses 12 through 15, it talks about the death of Adam. Until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not when the, there is no law. I mean, you, you understand that. I, I can remember watching uh, some old old westerns and things, and of course, of course, it, it wasn't right to do. But when they didn't have any law, nobody thought it was sin, and they uh, thought they were doing wrong because there's no law. To control it, and that's about the way it's getting today. There's getting to a place where there's no law. The law can't handle it. They're afraid to do something about it in this world today. And the law of the harvest will never change. If you understand what I'm talking about, there, because in Galatians chapter six, verse seven and eight. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whosoever or whatsoever. evil. The flesh is evil. The desires are evil. But the Holy Spirit is wanting us as individuals to walk with Him together here upon this earth and the opportunity we have. 
It is impossible to sow sin and reap a blessing. Think about that just for a moment. It is impossible to sow sow sin. wish I could sometimes. <laughs> Go to the bank down here and say, give me some money. But they, they'll first thing they'll ask me, do you have an account here? I said, no. Well, you can't have any money. <laughs> and that's the way it is. And when we go, if we got sin aboard, when we go and ask the Lord for favors and do something for us, do you think he's going to give it to us? If we've got sin aboard? It's the same way that we, we went to the bank. You know? Didn't put anything in it, you're not going to get anything out of it. Those who sow in the Spirit reap everlasting life. That's what it takes. But those who sow in the flesh reap corruption. What tragedy it is today. Every day of a life we're sowing some kind of a seed. What changes do you need to do or make today? We go out and do our best. We have to go out and kill the soil, turn the soil, plow the soil, turn it over, let it go through the winter time and and then go out and start disking it up and smoothing it out and getting it ready to plant the seed. We plant the seed for the crop. something you can take and lay a piece of kernel of corn right here and leave it for years and years and years and it'll stay just a piece of kernel of corn you drop it into the, into the ground and it'll die but it has to die first before it sprout up life and that's the same way with this in our lives we got to die out to the sins of this world die out to the things that we used to do. As Paul said, there's things that I want to do and I don't do it, but there's things that I shouldn't do and I want to do it. And there's a lot of people today are doing the same way. God has demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The speaker there Tuesday, morning, Tuesday afternoon he stressed so, and, uh, and the way he stressed it, it was fantastic in what he was saying. And I, I can't, I can't uh, copy it. <laughs> Wish I could for you. But he said, just think. Just as soon as they hung him on that cross, after nailing him to it, drop him in that hole, and uh, as soon as they did that, he looked out over the crowd and said, Father, 
Father, forgive them for they know what they're doing. And that's what he's saying to you today, if you're listening. Father, he, he or she don't know what she's doing. She's all mixed up. Let's say something. To, let's do something. Let's let them know. Let's, let's bring on a, let's allow a, something to happen, to wake them up. I believe he's trying his best today to wake up people today. See, it's happening in too many times in our day. But he'd give you free will offer, more or less. An offer. Do what you want to do. I give you your free chance. You do what you want to do. But where's the reward going to be? Are you going to be in the sinful? C.H. Spurgeon said this when I was when I have sinned he still loved me when I had forgotten has never ceased to love me all the years of my life. Even when I think Oliver Green put it in a, in a pretty way when he said people need to pray for you need to pray for people. He said pray for that one that has already got his foot in the grave. It's not saved. You have that chance. They have that chance right now.
Cambridge. Effort, all the effort that you got to that job, God's going to give you another. But until you mind God and give what you're supposed to, to do for the Lord and do for the people that hard you and pan you, then the, the job is not going to be yours. A new one is not going to be yours. You're going to have to live with that. That reminded me, and I'll say this quickly. A guy was making $500 a week and he started tithing. And he put his tithe money in. His 10%. And the Lord blessed him. And he started making $1,000. And he put his tithe money in. And the Lord kept blessing him. And made the, started up and went, went, went up to $1,500. Went on, 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 on up. You know. And he was faithful putting his tithe money. But then one day, he was offered $3,000 a month. And he thought for just a moment, that, well, God, you bless me. I'll, I'll go ahead and put my tithe in there. But the, it came to a place where he was making $160,000 a year. And he said, I can't afford to give him God 10% of it. I can't afford to give God 10% of it. So you know what happened? God demoted him real quick. <laughs> he gave him back a job where he was able to pay time. He felt like he needed to pay time. Is that the way it happened in your life? I don't know. It's just something that God brought to my mind. You know. There's anything that needs to be taken care of today in prayer. God will do it. It's it, the older prayer. That's what prayer is for. We sing in song. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. We've got to come bring our troubles to him and take, take on his, what he's going to give us to take on. Any kind of need, he can take care of it today. Do not put it off to tomorrow. Or the old saying, tomorrow never, never comes. But it might not come for you. Let's stand, wouldn't we? I hope that I delivered that. I felt that I delivered what God wanted me to deliver in the way He wanted me to deliver to you today. The main thing of it is, I want you to realize, there in the sixth verse, I am the Lord and I do not change. Any changing goes on more than one that does the changing. He loved us 
and he still loves us. What an opportunity we have. And then you drop on down below in the 10th verse. The latter part of the 10th, 10th verse. Well, he, uh, let me go back up to the first part. And that'll, that'll help it says, bring in your tithes into the storehouse, that they be, may be food. Try me now in this. In other words, try and see if it doesn't work. The, the latter part there, I want you to understand. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out on you a blessing, that there will be not room enough to receive. Is that kind of blessing you want today? More than what you can handle? It's up to you today. It's up to you. Anybody need to pray? Jim will be be speaking tonight. I want to thank also. Anybody want to pray? Thank God for coming in tonight. We have 12 here in tonight, what I heard. Thank you for being here. I just feel like I can't shut up right now. <laughs> I might not be saying very much, but I just don't feel like I can say leave. Because I feel somebody has a need that needs to be taken care of. Man, I'd hate for you to leave out of here. I really, I really would hate for you to leave out of here and you step outside that door and I wouldn't see you again. <coughs> and that's an easy thing. Say this and close it. I had a, I was in a service one night. A young boy came to the altar. I think he was late twenties, or not late twenties, late, late teens, early twenties. I don't remember exactly. And he got saved. And he got up and was testifying. And he, he said, "There's just something that is not complete." I just don't feel complete. I feel like my sins are all forgiven. I just don't think think I feel complete. And we knelt he knelt back down there and we prayed for him again. And when he got up he was so rejoicing. He said, I feel free. I feel everything's taken care of. And eight mile down the road, he was hit head on and taken out of the world. What would have happened if he hadn't made that second dip? I don't know for sure. But he felt something down in his heart that he needed to take care of. Brother David, did you miss the Lord's Prayer, would you? Father, we come today, Lord, thanking you for hearing your word. Let each and every one examine their self, Lord, and God, uh, and understand.
understand where they belong with you. <coughs> God, we ask you to go with each and every one as we go our separate ways. And Don, give everybody a chance to return tonight and we'll